Okay, welcome back to members of a 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, and an ongoing study in existentialism in the novel by Samara Rain, entitled She Died Then Showed Me. We're looking at chapter 11, and uh, before we jump into chapter 11, let's do a quick little recap on what we've learned so far, especially in chapter 10. We know that in chapter 10, Garant told Peyton that her work tells her story. And Peyton has discovered that the possibilities that exist for her in this uh, life of the last start, and her life is the life of the last start, it is an eschatological life that she is continuing to fill in that was uh, started by her mother. But she learned from Garant that her, her contribution, her task, is to tell her story. And her story is to be told through her art. That is the possibility that lies ahead of her, and that is the task to which she has been called. She has been called to tell her story, just like all of us, to give a testimony to our life and uh, to tell our story and to include within that story the sacrificial lives of those who went before us. In Peyton's case, that is uh, her father Sorensen and her mother Harlow, who lived sacrificial lives, who gave their lives and their life energy to the Mission Church. Uh, we learned that about her parents. And then in Chapter 10, we learned that uh, she has a task to tell her story and that uh, Garant is going to be possibly the doorway through which she'll be able to do this because her story is told in her art, in the compositions of her art. The way she composes her story is an artistic composition. And uh, in chapter 11, we now return from the journey to the gallery in LA and now we're returning to the where the place of contemplation the ranch remember the uh, the ranch is where she contemplates on the terrace the place of contemplation she's a uh, discovered new possibilities in LA she's discovered uh, possibilities that are genuine Garant genuinely admires her work and praises her work. And he says that it tells her story. Peyton's task is now to tell her story and to tell it in the best way she can, which for her it's going to be through her art and it's going to be through the composition of the way she composes her story. And now she is going to return in chapter 11 to the ranch and uh, sort through all this, all these new uh, discoveries, these new discoveries that need to be internalized and integrated with what she knew before. Now she needs to uh, internalize what she discovered and uh, come up with a uh, a revised best picture of the truth. This is where we're at in chapter 11. So let's go to block one and take a look at going out from and returning to the self. The return moment, returning from L.A. Peyton returns from L.A. and it says she melts into thought. She needs to uh, think about all that took place are these possibilities that have been revealed to her. 
so she melts into thought after going outside herself to explore possibilities in L.A. And possibilities, possibilities truly were discovered there. And now she desires a visit with Royce, her godmother. Why? Because one thing she can count on with Royce is that uh, even though it might come in a very blunt manner uh, or a very unusual manner, Royce does at least speak the truth. She will hear the truth. So what better place to kind of sort out all that's taken place and to kind of sift through these new internalizations than to go to Royce, her godmother. New internalizations and filtering new information. Peyton brings a gift of Sophia cake. I love that. Greek in Sophia is wisdom. She brings wisdom cake. And uh, Royce and Peyton are going to share some wisdom in the tea room. Peyton wondered about the relationship between her mother and father because they were so different. Sorensen was an independent intellectual, and Harlow was one of an artistic temperament. And Royce relates that at one point Harlow even had an affair, and that Harlow had an artistic temperament of emotional highs and emotional lows. Peyton declared, yes, I know, she was bipolar. And that is why Sorensen wanted no more children. So Peyton says, my mother, Harlow, had a mental challenge. She had a, she wasn't perfect. None of us are perfect. She had her own mountains to climb. She had her own challenges in life. And uh, it was a very uh, psychological challenge. Peyton says, I know. Harlow was bipolar. And that's why Sorensen wanted no more children. And it's important for this to be actually realized and confessed by Peyton. But block one is all about this return moment, okay? Peyton is returning from that exploration in L.A. of uh, trying to discover what, what are the new possibilities that are out there for my life? What is this new last start that I'm involved in? What are the possibilities in L.A. for me? And she discovers that her task is to testify. Her task is to tell her story in art. And Garant, the head of the gallery in L.A., says uh, your artwork is genuine and your artwork tells your story. And he loves it. So block one is about returning back to the ranch and uh, internalizing all this uh, new discovery that uh, Peyton has made. And uh, she begins with a dialogue with Royce because she can count on Royce to tell her the truth. Let's go to block two. The awakening. Remember, she's passed through repentance already. She's entered into a life of faith. And now we get to the awakening of one's motivational base. When you return from this uh, uh, mission to discover possibilities for your life and what your contribution and your testimony is and what it's all about, there becomes an awakening of your motivational base when you internalize all this new information. Becoming vulnerable and taking risk. Peyton tell, Royce tells Peyton that sometimes Harlow simply wanted someone to be vulnerable with. But for Sorensen, Harlow was exhausting. Then Royce gave Peyton the necessary wisdom don't be angry that Harlow was bipolar. Instead, be understanding, be forgiving. Very good advice. Very good advice. The attributes of understanding and forgiveness. Royce tells Peyton that she sees both 
her mother and her father in Peyton. An emotional character and an intellectual character. Those traits are both in Peyton. But Peyton realizes to herself that she must be more than simply an extension of her parents. Yes, she is an extension of her parents, but she also must be her true self and tell her own story. She must reconsider this possibility of exhibiting her work in the gallery again. Actualizing possibilities by recognizing the signs. Royce tells Peyton that some of her family's past will always remain a secret. You're not going to know everything. You're not going to be given every detail. Some of the past will remain a secret beyond your grasp. She may recognize some signs that point in a certain direction, but not every past detail will be revealed. So after this visit with truth, this visit with Royce, Peyton confesses to herself of being awake and overwhelmed. I think that's a beautiful expression. She professes to herself of being awake and overwhelmed. Overwhelmed by the new and awakened by the new. And this is a necessary step before ever venturing out again. I mean, this is return moment, but return moments are there to uh, prepare us for the next venturing outside ourselves. So all of this return moment is to prepare Peyton for that next moment of going outside herself again, but now with a more refined truth, a more refined motivation, and a more refined recognition of the task ahead of her to tell her genuine story, which is a continuation of the story of the last start, or we could say it as a uh, the eschatological start, the future-oriented start toward a new life and a new future. And Peyton knows this is going to involve evaluating and reevaluating the sacrificial lives of those who came before her. She's going to be looking back on sacrifice, and she already has in the novel. Uh, we got a very strong look at Christian existentialism with Father Gabriel. And Father Gabriel said that uh, Sorensen and Harlow both participated in the ministry of the Mission Church. They both participated sacrificially in the Mission Church. So Peyton has already uh, looked back at a sacrifice that is meaningful for her own life. That's part of this last start that she's involved in telling and retelling. It will take up past sacrifice and it will include future hope. A future hope where she will actualize possibilities that Garant outlined for her in the visit in chapter 10. Remember what Garant told her. In your paintings, I see hope. I see powerful trust. I see your story. Boy, I'll tell you, if, if you get that told to you, that's the greatest compliment. That's the greatest uh, encouragement in the world you could possibly hear. In your work, I see hope. In your work, I see powerful trust. In your work, I see your authentic story. I mean, that is just a, we discovered that in chapter 10. That is unbelievably powerful. And uh, Peyton, after returning in chapter 11 here, back to the ranch, uh, has begun to internalize all of this and to refine her understanding of truth, to refine her understanding of past sacrifice, and the future task of telling her story. Let's go to block three.
putting the new internalizations in order. Time for some existential gardening. Uh, it, by the way, I love the way that uh, Rain uses metaphor in this uh, in this novel. I mean, she's writing. I mean, you know, we've had Father Gabriel introduced. This is pure existentialism, but it is uh, it has transitioned to becoming very powerful Christian existentialism, spiritual existentialism. It's very very powerful. But uh, I love the metaphors that she uses here in Block Three. Time for some existential gardening. Peyton declares to Lally, Lally that she will tend to the garden. It is time to filter through the filter through and weed out the recent internalizations in order to ready things for the fall garden. It's a time for input from community. Scarborough joins Peyton. I, I love this this scene. Scarborough joins Peyton to repair the raised beds in the garden. The corners need strengthening. The corners need repair. They need to be squared up and refastened and strengthened. It will require a joint communal effort. When we try to refine the truth and discern the truth in greater clarity, we do so always in community. We never do it alone. So where does she go to the garden? What happens there? It's a communal effort at the garden. This filtering through these internalizations, uh, this refinement of the truth, it's a shared task with Peyton and Scarborough together. I love that metaphor. This metaphor of the garden is beautiful. Another metaphor for ordering the recent internalizations. Peyton uses the shovel of her grandfather over a century old. The past must also be enlisted for this task. Time for nourishing the soil. Peyton and Scarborough determine to nourish the soil with uh, compost. Dialogue nourishes the ordering of the signs of truth. Peyton asked about the old cook, Ambrosia. She was present the day that Harlow died, and Peyton is determined to speak with her. Peyton wants to know more about this uh, the sacrificial life of her mother, the sacrificial life of her father. She wants to know more. And uh, Scarborough feels that she must live on the reservation. Adler's name is brought up again because Peyton will need his help in promoting the hunt at Royce's party. Scarborough tells Peyton that Father, here we go, Father Gabriel is brought up. Father Gabriel does appreciate Adler also. Very important that we end chapter 11 with Father Gabriel being brought up again. We need to, we need to keep in mind that chapter well, actually, it all goes together, but chapter 10 and chapter 11, just like chapter 8 and chapter 9 went together for repentance, chapter 10 and chapter 11 go together for the venturing out of one's self to discover new possibilities, and then the return into the self for meditation and refinement of truth and awakening of that motivational base. So chapters 10 and 11 go together, and... I didn't know that. This is my first time through the book. I didn't know that till I finished 11, but then I said, you know what? This chapter 11, it's part of chapter 10. This go, these two chapters go together. 8 and 9 went together. 10 and 11 go together. In this chapter, 11, we get to look at the internalization of what Peyton discovered when she went to outside herself and took the risk of uh, going to L.A., out into the secular world, very secular world. She went out into the secular world to discover her task. A new, because she didn't know that uh, her work had any value. She doubted it. She doubted her own value. And uh, Garant said, no, in your work, I see hope. In your work, I see 
a strong trust. I see faith. In your work, I see your authentic story. I want to show your work in my gallery, 30 to 40 pieces, because I see authentic story, and I see hope, and I see powerful trust, very powerful trust. That is uh, what Peyton discovered. Now in Chapter 11, she's gone back to the ranch. She's working through internalizing all of this, but at the same time, she wants uh, truth from Royce, and she wants uh, a dialogue with Scarborough to filter through all of this and to refine this and to uh, shape and reshape. We all do this to shape and to reshape her motivational base. We all do that. That's what we do. You know, we uh, go outside ourselves. We take a risk in some venture, and then we learn by doing. Peyton has learned by doing, by taking that trip to L.A. into a radical, secular society. Remember, shiny surface reality is all that mattered in L.A. But in that risk, she discovered, I have a task to tell my story. And I need to tell my story with a better understanding of the sacrifice that took place before my story. That is a part of my story. She wants to know more of her father. She wants to know more of her mother. She wants to know more of their sacrificial life. She already has learned that they sacrificially gave to the mission church. Uh, that they didn't feel comfortable in the uh, wealthy Catholic diocese. They felt needed and at home in the mission church led by Father Gabriel. And uh, Peyton has this information. Then she has the information of this new possible beginning in a work that now she's been told, work that has value. Her work is uh, an artistic Testimony. It's an artistic telling of her story. And that's her task. Her task is to tell her story. That wraps up uh, chapter 11, but it really goes with chapter 10. The two go together. And next time, yes, chapter 12 next time. Very, very powerful. Chapter 11, very powerful. And we'll see you next time.